Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Grace Hour. This is Paul Andrelonis, and I'm going to share a word today about busyness and the impact that it can have on our lives and what the Bible says about it and how we can keep it from being something that takes over our lives. And uh, it's something that I think is in the world we live in now, the busier you are, the more important you feel, maybe. And uh, I have a word today that I hope can help us maybe change the narrative on that and think about why it is we do the things that we do and how we should prioritize and think about the things we give our time to because we only have so much time and uh, we want to make sure we're using it effectively because once it passes, we never get that time back. So just thinking about this idea of busyness and thinking about it in general, like what does the word busy mean? And I just looked up the definition of the word busy and uh, the definition I found was having a great deal to do. And uh, thinking about that definition, we could look at it two different ways, I think. Having a great deal to do could mean I have a lot of little things that I have to do, or it could be that I have some big things that I have to do that take up a lot of my time. And I just wanted to start off talking about this uh, topic of busyness, thinking about it in Philippians chapter 4. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I'm thinking about this, and if you notice when, when things start to get busy in our lives, we start to get anxious. We start to kind of get stressed out, get worried, get all these different things are going on in our lives, and we're not sure, maybe, or we're worried or we're anxious about what the next thing is, and in that anxiety, in that worry, in that stress that we feel, we actually are not living in the present moment of our lives. We're not living in what we're experiencing. We're just worrying about what's that next thing that I have on my calendar. So I'm a pastor here at Greater Grace, and I, I'm married, and I have three kids, uh, one in seventh grade, one in fifth grade, and one in second grade. And our schedule is full, to say the least. My my, two of my kids play sports. Um, they all are in school and have homework. They have other activities outside uh, of school that they're involved in. And our calendar is very full. Um, but our lives are full at the same time. And sometimes when we're having our calendar full, we actually don't feel like we're living. We just I feel like we're just uh, going from one place to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. Uh, chauffeuring our kids around or just we're in the car all the time and our time is filled up with just traveling from place to place and we're not actually experiencing each moment that we have in our lives right one thing that I think is important for us to do as human believe as human beings and as believers is to prioritize our time and that's an important thing because I need to know what to say no to and what to say yes to with my time. Am I uh, going to forfeit the time that I have with my family for this other activity that maybe would be fun, maybe would be enjoyable, but it takes away the time that I have with my family? And this is something that takes um, dedication, it takes discernment, it takes being um, willing to look at the things you have in your life and determining um, where they stand. And I think it's something that we grow into and something that, honestly, as we grow, as our lives change, as we maybe our family grows, as we have kids, as we have a relationship or have a new career or have all these different things, what was once a priority in our lives may change, you know, five, six, seven, ten years down the road. Now I have new priorities in my life. I have things that have changed and uh my busyness of my life may change in the same way. And when I was thinking about this, um, 
topic of busyness, having things in their proper place and having a time of rest was, the, for whatever reason, was the thing that came to my mind, right? We're always busy, and with that busyness comes this longing and this yearning for a time where I'm not busy, right? Have you ever thought of in your life, well, I just need to get through this month, and then next month I'll have a reprieve, I'll have things won't be so busy, and I can, I can take a deep breath, and I can you know, enjoy whatever is going on in my life. And then somehow, some way, the next month gets just as busy as this month, and then the next month, and then it's the holidays, and then it's, it's a never-ending cycle of just full calendars and no time for rest. But in the Bible, God was very specific in uh, a, a pattern and developing a model for rest in our lives. In Genesis chapter 2, after God created all of uh, the universe— he rested, right? And then when the Israelites were in the wilderness, part of the laws and the things that he commanded his, his people to follow was that they would observe or remember the Sabbath, which was a day where they would not work, where they would uh, focus on the person who delivered them from the slavery that they experienced in Egypt. And that was something that God put there on purpose. And then also, the day, of, the day of rest, one day of rest a week, but then he would also have a year of rest in, uh, that he uh, talked about in Leviticus chapter 25, where at that point there was a lot of agricultural development, and they were farming, and they were keeping and tilling the land and doing the things that they had to, and God established this Sabbath year where they would not touch the, the fields uh, where they had planted crops for that entire year. And in the year before that Sabbath year, so the sixth year, God would provide, uh, or the, he would provide for his people enough crops, enough food, and enough things that they needed to last for three years so that they wouldn't, so that would be, they would be able to rest. Right? And the people would rely on God in that and trust in Him that, okay, this is the sixth year. We need to, God is going to give us everything we need for the next three years. Um, but do, did the Israelites trust Him? And maybe we can take this idea for ourselves too. In the same time when they're in the wilderness, God said, You will rest on the, on the Sabbath and you won't go out and uh, get manna, the manna from heaven. I will give you enough on the sixth day so you won't have to go. So they're linked with this Sabbath is a dependence on God. And maybe in our lives, we need to think about our schedules and think about how much am I depending on God in my times of busyness? How much am I focusing on what He's providing for me instead of trying to provide for myself? And thinking about this in my life, like I said already, like the schedule can get overwhelming and it can become a lot for us to bear. And I've noticed in my life uh, a correlation between my stress level increasing as my time with God and my relationship with God or my specific time of study and prayer and Bible reading as it decreases. In my job, uh, I would go during my lunch break, I would take, you know, my Bible, and I would take maybe my notes from a church service, and I would go during my lunch break, and I would go to a quiet place, and I would read through my notes and go through my Bible, and that was kind of my study time during the day. Then uh, the pandemic happened, and I was no longer at the office anymore. I was at home with my, my wife and my kids, and we're all in the house trying to figure out what life is like. So my quiet time that I had with God at my lunch, you know, during my work day at, at lunch, that was, that was gone. Um, and I noticed how, I mean, obviously there was a lot of stressors happening at that time in our lives, just being stuck at home and all those things. But I could also feel that heaviness or that thing that was once in my life, which is uh, my, my relationship with God and my connection with Him and His Word, I could sense that there was something missing. And... Um, I've learned that that time where I relate to God, that time where I connect with Him, is very important. 
And especially in our times of busyness, it's important for us to make that a priority because our stress and the things that we have in our life can just continue to pile up and pile up. And I need to know who my source of uh, life is. I need to know who is the one who gives me rest and who gives me peace in my life. And that is God. So this actually happened not too long ago. Um, every morning I would wake up to take my kids to school. This is actually last fall. And, you know, we're, we're getting the school year has started. We have our routine and we're getting up. I'm getting up at a certain time. And every morning I'm waking up and I'm getting my kids ready for school. And there's just this rush that is happening in the morning. I'm like, okay, I got to get up. Okay, we all got to get ready to go. We got to get in the car and get to school. And I noticed as the first week of school happens, maybe the second week of school happens, I'm getting more and more stressed in the morning trying to get out the door and trying to get to school, right? We got to get to school because we're going to be late, right? So then I'm stressed. And then as a result, my kids are stressed and we're like, we got to go, we got to go. And then like, you hear this all the time, like meeting God in the morning, and, you know, I've heard in my entire life, and I'm like, yeah, that, I'm not a morning person. That's for other people maybe had that mentality. But then I was like, okay, maybe I'll just get up, get up a half an hour earlier or maybe an hour earlier than I did before, and I'll meet God in the morning. And it was like a revolutionary thing in my life, which it took me 30, <laughs> 33 years to figure out, you know, like, why, why is it now? It's like every morning, it's like I'm waking up and I'm meeting God and then amazingly, you know, miraculously, you could say maybe, or just like, obviously, now the mornings are smooth because I can meet God in the morning. I have my time where I can pray. I can read my Bible. I can do the things that I have, my quiet time with God, and then we can kind of get, get ready for the school day and get ready to go. And I start the morning that way now. So this is like a priority which, I mean, I feel like I had it as a priority before, but now I have it, at, like I have this picture in my mind of like, okay, every morning this is what I'm going to do. When I don't have that time with God in the morning for whatever reason, I can have, I, I have to make time at some other point in the day to have that. Um, now, I'm not saying you have to get up at like 4 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever. I, I, th I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, but you have to have that time where you meet God and you have this time of rest and this time of peace because we can get overwhelmed um, with the busyness that happens in our lives, right? So I have this, uh, another verse that I wanted to, to look at um, in uh, Luke chapter 10. Um, Jesus is invited to, to eat at, at Martha and Mary's house. And uh, I think as it relates to our lives and maybe as it relates also to ministry and our life in the church, we can kind of get caught up in what we're doing. We can get caught up in this thing and this event that's happening or the service that's happening or this, you know, uh, school day or whatever it is. We can get caught up in these, the schedule that we have and the schedule we have to keep, right? And we have this um, in Luke chapter 10, it says... Uh, Yes, yeah, so verse 38 says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So Martha welcomes Jesus into her house, and um, she is serving him. Okay, she has a sister whose name is Mary. And in verse 39 it says that Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. Uh, and then continuing on it says in verse 40, Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me, right? And Jesus' answer is, is uh, you know, kind of sobering in a way. As we think about busyness, as we think about the things that we're doing, okay? Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Like I said at the beginning, sometimes we equate our importance and our value in life with how many things we have going on and how many things we put on our schedule. Um, but Jesus says there's one thing that's important in our lives, 
there's one thing, and that is sitting at his feet and receiving from him. If I'm doing something in, in my church, in, in my job, in my, my family, that is taking me away from seeing Jesus in that moment, then I need to reassess what that, that thing is and where it stands in my life. Right? I have to think about the impact of that thing and how it relates me to Jesus. Am I doing this thing because I am getting closer to Jesus, or am I doing it just because I've done it for the last 25, 30 years? Right? And in some cases, that can be a difficult uh, place to be where I've been doing this thing for so long. Maybe it's how I identify myself, but am I finding Jesus? Am I sitting at his feet and experiencing his life in that thing that I have, in that thing that I'm doing for his glory, right? We have the Sabbath day that we talked about in Exodus and in Leviticus, right? And it was something that the Pharisees brought up all the time to Jesus when he healed on the Sabbath. They said, why are you allowing these people to heal on the Sabbath? And Jesus said, the Sabbath was not made for man, wait, was man made for the Sabbath? The Sabbath was not made for man, but man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was something that was supposed to point them towards Jesus, point them towards the one who gave them the things. They shouldn't be taking that thing and putting it in its proper, in proper place. I'm supposed to go to God, I'm supposed to see him in these things and not get distracted from all these different things uh, in my life. This is like something that, uh, like I said, is a struggle for us because our lives can be so full uh, to take the time and to really rest and recognizing when to say yes and when to say no to things. Is this thing going to bring me closer to Jesus? Or is this thing going to just make me less, less, have less time to meet with him? And the, the interesting thing about this mindset of being closer to Jesus, right? Choosing the good part and sitting at Jesus' feet and getting to know him more. It's like, that's honestly what we were made to do as human beings. That's, we are made in the image and likeness of God, right? In the garden, we were made in his image and likeness, and we had this relationship, and then the fall made us lose that connection with him, and we're, as, as we live our lives, trying to get closer and closer and closer to him, to who he is. And we need this, this uh, presence, this connection with him in our lives, because when we do that, when we are sitting at Jesus' feet, when we do the things that we do, we actually get to enjoy them. We actually get to experience the fullness of those things because I'm living in the moment. I'm living in what God is doing in that moment, and I'm meeting him in everything that I'm doing. I'm not just, well, let's just get this thing over with so I can move on to the next thing. Let's just get this meeting over with, this church service over with, this so we can do this, so we can do that. So We, we have to meet Jesus in those moments. And I just wanted to read another, uh, actually maybe the whole chapter in Psalms. Uh, there's a chapter in the last verses, uh, or the second to last verses, um, the key one, but I'll just, I'll just read it from the beginning. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and then the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Behold, Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. And this is the verse that I, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And I was just thinking about this, this psalm, all the different words that we see in this psalm, and maybe we can relate some of them to our lives in the busyness that we have, right? Have you ever noticed in, 
in the stress and the busyness of your life that you are enraged, that you are maybe feel like you're at war with something, maybe you're scared and troubled, maybe there's things shaking in your lives, maybe there's, you know, you're looking for refuge in some, some, uh, in some place, or there seems like there's a fire, there's a burning, there's something in your life that's missing, right? God has given us a framework for how we can find him, and it's by being still. I don't always have to be moving. I don't always have to have something going on. I have to be able to be still and know that he is God and exalt him in my life and make sure when I'm busy, I'm busy doing what God has called me to do. I'm busy doing the thing that uh, God has put inside of me, which is drawing closer to him and these things that I have in my life. I can really... Um, get bogged down with the things that are going on in my life, especially when I'm doing it in my own strength, when I'm doing it because I have to, when I'm doing it because I have nothing better to do. It's something that I think, uh, especially in America, but I think in general in the on in Earth, on Earth, there's this idea that I can't sit still, I can't have rest, I can't find rest in my life because if I do, then I'll have to think about all these things that are going on in my brain so I just distract myself by doing this thing and doing that thing and doing this thing and doing that thing so that when I get home I just pass out and I fall asleep and then I wake up and I do the do it all over again as opposed to having actual restful peaceful time where I'm not busy or where yeah where I can rest in the fact that I know who I am and I know who Jesus is right and that rest is actually something that I can enjoy while I'm doing the things that God is calling me to do, right? When I find rest in who God is, the things that were causing me stress and the things that I was filling my calendar with before and I was dreading and I was like not caring about, I can actually find joy in those things. Now when I'm driving in my car, taking my son to his soccer game or home from his soccer game, I can say, I can enjoy that time and, and uh, have conversations that are worthwhile and experience them and not be worried about checking my email for my job or what are we going to have for dinner or all these different things that can cause me stress and make me feel like I'm so busy. So um, for me, this is like the prioritizing of my time, the prioritizing of the things in my life, as I said before. Uh, time is something that we only have a certain amount of in this life, in this world. And as I have, as my kids grow up, I'm realizing how quickly time goes. How how quickly, like we um, we move on and transition, and there's new phases in our life. So it's given me a desire and a longing to really embrace the moments that I have. So my relationship with God is 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 a key and is very important. My time with my family. Is, is another one that is extremely important because we have been given these relationships in our lives where um, it really shows us and gives us a, a glimpse into what it's like when one will be in heaven when we have these fullness of these relationships, right? In the garden, we were given these relationships where, you know, Adam was given this relationship with God where he has this uh, unashamed relationship where he can say, say things and talk to God and these relationships that we have in our lives are a glimpse into that. So my family is an important part of those things. Ministry-wise, discipling and helping young people and teaching and preaching, and those things are important as well. And, I, and my job uh, outside of ministry is important too, but I have to make sure that when my job is taking me away from my family, I need to recognize when that is, is becoming too much of a burden and I'm losing my joy. This happened to me before where I, like, I would go to my job and I would come home and I would complain at home about my job. Like all, like my wife and I would sit and I would just talk about all the things that happened. She would talk about all the things that happened. And I was like, is this really how I want to spend my time talking about it? So it came to a point where I was like, okay, I think I need a new job because this is not a beneficial way to spend my time with my family talking about it. So recognizing these things and these things that are they're stealing my joy and stealing me away from the presence 
of God. Now, obviously, in our lives, we have these responsibilities that we have. I have a responsibility as a father. I have a responsibility as a wife. I have a responsibility for providing for my family um, by having a job. And God, but God gives me grace and gives and will provide the things that I need. And I need to make sure that I'm recognizing when I am moving too fast, when I have too much going on, and when I need to have that time of rest in my life. Because that time of rest and refreshing and nourishment that I get, it makes it possible for me to continue. And uh, it's kind of, we see it when, when we're stressed out, when we have a lot going on, our bodies are pushed to the limit, we end up uh, having issues, you know, our immune system gets weaker and we end up getting sick. And I think with that, our bodily expression of that stress on us, where our lives get, our body gets sick, we can't, you know, function the way we should, that's a picture of what happens in the other areas of our lives that are not physical, Right. When I am so stressed out doing these things with my job, like my relationship with my family, it can be sick. The, 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 the way I relate to my ministry can be, can be under the weather, can, can be affected. I need to make sure that what I'm doing and what is going on in my life is because Jesus has put that in my life and because I'm doing it for his glory. Right, there's a quote that says, the, the chief end of man, it's I think from the Westminster, Westminster Catechism, is that the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. So if I have things in my life that are preventing me from glorifying God and preventing me from enjoying Him, then I need to think about those things. Think about which ones are important and which ones I need to uh, maybe remove and to prune from my lives. And the last, last verse that I'll, I'll, I'll read and then I'll be done is in Matthew chapter 11. It says, uh, starting verse 25, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to him the Son reveals. The Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When I am busy, when I'm stressed out, I need to know who to go to. And the answer to that question is Jesus Christ. I need to go to him because he is the one who can take the burden of this, uh, my career, my job, my relationships, all the things that I have that are weighing me down. I can give him those things and I can enjoy those things. When I give them to him, and they are no longer a burden on me, I can actually look at them differently now because they're not on my shoulders. I can see them and I can enjoy them. And I can recognize when they're taking me away from Jesus and remove them if I have to. Jesus has given us his yoke, which is easy, and his burden is light. He takes this guilt, fear, and shame that we have of our sin and he puts them on his shoulders. He takes the stresses and the burdens of my busy life and he puts it on his shoulders, and we can en and can then enjoy the rest and the peace that he gives us. So, busyness is something that we can equate, or that the the culture we live in equates with importance. But Jesus is the one who gives us our importance. He gives us our value, and we can take our busyness and we can lay it on his shoulders, and then we can enjoy those things that we have in our lives. Wouldn't it be great if I could just enjoy the time that I spend with my family instead of complaining about my job or being stressed out the entire time or never finished working or whatever the case is? I can do that because Jesus has made it possible for me to do that. I can enjoy him, and enjoying him, I can enjoy all the other blessings that he's given me in my life, my family, my job, my ministry. So, Let's be busy getting to know who Jesus is, being close to him, sitting at his feet as we walk through this life, as we walk by faith, trusting in him, honoring him, 
and glorifying him and enjoying him forever. Amen.